Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking all about smart TVs. Devices that are pretty ubiquitous now, but were all the rage back in 2010 when Google decided to launch Google TV. Now I'm not talking about the new Google TV that was launched just last month. This was a smart TV platform. Although it carries its name, Google wasn't the only company involved since they only developed the software. The hardware was left to other companies, initially just Sony and Logitech. Tech, and we have one of those devices right here, the Sony Internet TV, that I recently got at a local thrift store and featured in this video up in the cards. Now the very keen-eyed among you may be able to tell that this is not a television, but instead a set-top box of sorts. Its full name is the Sony Internet TV 3D Blu-ray Disc Player. Ah uh, yeah, remember 3D TVs? Weren't those the greatest? No? Oh yeah, that's right. And this was one of the two ways that you could get Google TV. The other way was by buying a Sony television that had Google TV already installed. Sony produced Google TVs in four different sizes, and Logitech had a box as well called the Revue. And yeah, this was the same deal as the Sony box that we have here, though it was the first Google TV-enabled device to be announced. And instead of coming with a TV remote, you got this. Yeah, a keyboard with a trackpad on the right side and some navigation controls underneath. You might think this is crazy, but one of the largest features of Google TV was its inclusion of the Chrome web browser. So this makes a lot more sense. So, if you ever wanted to browse the web while sitting 10 feet away from your screen, now you can. Oh, and great news! You can still buy this thing from Newegg for $100 for some reason. I know where my next paycheck is going. The Sony devices came with this thing, a compromise between the traditional remote and a keyboard. Honestly, I prefer this because I can't see myself doing much web browsing on my TV. The remote is kind of designed like a game controller. There are even two shoulder buttons on the top. Now, the Sony Internet TV box itself is pretty large like very large, especially when you compare it to the streaming sticks that we have today. But this was 2010, not 2019 or 2020. And inside this box is essentially a small desktop computer. These devices were actually x86 based and they had an Intel processor inside, specifically a modified Intel Atom that included some improved graphics hardware. This Sony device has a built-in Blu-ray player as well, as you could probably tell from the super long name, and it can also play DVDs, obviously. And since Google created the software, they based Google TV's OS on Android, specifically version 3.2 Honeycomb. The UI is pretty simple to navigate and you can definitely see some Android UI elements in certain menus. If you had a cable or satellite box, what you would do is plug that into the HDMI in port and then plug your TV into the HDMI out port. This way you could still watch regular TV content right from Google TV's interface. And I know that I joked about the web browser before, but it's actually one of the main ways that you can watch video content. Just go to any video streaming site and find something to watch. Except for Hulu, since they blocked Google TV devices for some reason. Hey, remember when Hulu with ads was free? <laughs> yeah, well that didn't last long. But Hulu wasn't the only company that blocked access from a Google TV device. There were also NBC, CBS, and ABC. They all prevented Google TV-based devices from accessing the video content on their websites. Now they did this by looking at the user agent that the web browser would report to the website and then block it accordingly. So thanks guys, really appreciate that. Doesn't really make any sense though. I mean, the only reason I can see them doing this was to prevent people from not having to buy a cable or satellite subscription to watch their shows, but if someone really wanted to, they could just hook a regular PC up to their TV and access the websites from there. And all three of these TV stations broadcast for free over the air, so what does it matter? But in addition to browsing the web to find content, there were also some apps that came pre-installed, like Netflix, and eventually they allowed access to the Google Play Store, then known as the Android Market in a system update, so you could get even more streaming apps. And since the system is Android-based, you can even access things like a list of installed applications, how much memory is being used by the system, even some developer options are available as well. And yes, you've probably noticed the mouse cursor. 
That is accessible at any time, even on the system menus. On the Sony remote, the right thumb pad acts as a trackpad of sorts. You're able to move your thumb around to move the cursor and press the button to click on something. Obviously, you can also navigate the system menus by using the navigation buttons on the remote as well, but while browsing the web, the mouse cursor is actually pretty useful. And one of the major features included with Google TV is the search box. You can access this by pressing the search button on the remote. Here, you can search for a TV show or a movie, and Google TV will search for that content across all of the sources available to it, including live TV channels, YouTube videos, DVR recordings, and also give you an option to do a regular Google search through Chrome. The first gen Google TV devices didn't get the greatest reviews, but the criticism was mainly focused on the software. So when Google released updates to it and added more features, these reviews generally became more positive. But since this was first gen hardware, the price to get Google TV was pretty high. The Sony box that I have originally cost $300, and the Logitech box $250. And when people found out that some content providers were blocking it, and the fact that it was really just a glorified web browser for your TV, it caused Google TV devices not to sell very well. Like, at all. Logitech had so many unsold units that they cut the price of their Google TV box from $250 to $99 in less than a year. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Eventually, second-gen Google TV devices came onto the market, and they were all ARM-based instead of x86-based, and Google partnered with more hardware manufacturers. LG was one of them, and they also made a TV with Google TV built right in. And while reviews of these devices were generally more favorable, the writing was already on the wall regarding the fate of Google TV. In the summer of 2014, just about four years after its introduction, Google TV was replaced with Android TV a new platform that is still around today. And like its predecessor, it runs on TVs and set-top boxes, along with some other devices. And not long afterwards, Google killed off Google TV's software development kit, which was required to develop applications for the platform, and stopped releasing new software updates, essentially killing off the entire platform. But Google had the right idea with Google TV. They were just a bit too early. Streaming devices are everywhere these days, and the amount of people ending their cable or satellite subscription to go streaming only is constantly growing. So who knows, maybe if Google TV was launched a few years later at a lower price, it could have lasted much longer. And today, you can't really do much with Google TV. The YouTube app doesn't work, the unified search box won't show any results, and the Chrome web browser, since it's an old version, is not capable of browsing on more advanced websites. YouTube will load in the browser, and it will actually redirect me to the YouTube TV interface, and I can see the latest videos and do searches, unlike in the app, but trying to play a video will result in an error. So, using a Sony Internet TV 3D Blu-ray disc player today isn't going to be the greatest experience at all. Just go and get yourself a Fire TV stick or a Roku if you don't have a smart TV. But that is a look back at Google's very first smart TV platform. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a like and get subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications for new videos like this multiple times every single week. I'll even have another Google TV related video coming soon. I won't spoil much, but stick around if you want to see that one. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.